In this video, let's talk some more about saddle points and let's start from the simple example of a two-dimensional linear map given by the following simple matrix, so diagonal matrix with the following diagonal elements. So as you know, a saddle point will have an attracting and repelling direction. The question is, can you identify the set of points that the map will eventually map towards the saddle point, which is the, the origin in the case of this, uh, this linear map? So pause the video and see if you can find a set of points that will end up at uh, the origin. So the answer is that it's the x-axis that will basically map towards the, the origin, because if you multiply by a vector like this, you see that uh, x will get multiplied by 0.9 every time, so the x value will shrink until it eventually ends up at, uh, at the origin. So the x-axis is the attracting direction of the, the saddle. Now the name of the points that the map will eventually send towards the saddle, um, that collection of points has a special name in general, also for nonlinear maps, and uh, that is called the stable manifold of the, uh, the saddle. So the stable manifold. So formally you can define this as the set of points V for which if you apply the map an, uh, an infinite number of times, that eventually this will map towards the saddle point P. So this distance will go towards zero if the amount of times you apply the map goes towards infinity. So this is the definition of a stable manifold. Now this stable manifold has a number of properties, which I will just mention here without any proof. Um, and let's again focus on 2D systems. So for a 2D system, you can show that the stable manifold is actually a one-dimensional manifold, uh, which of course begs the question, yeah, what is a manifold actually? So it's good that we define that. A manifold is a geometrical concept and it basically means a structure that locally looks like a line. So if you zoom in enough, it will look like a, like a straight line. An example of a one-dimensional manifold is a circle because wherever you zoom in on that circle, if you zoom in an infinite uh, amount, basically this will look like a straight line. So this is an example of a 1D manifold. What is not an example of a 1D manifold is this letter I, if you want. Of course, if you zoom in in the middle, it will look like a line, obviously. But the problem here is the ends. If you zoom in at the end, yeah, it will look like half a line, and that, of course, doesn't count. So this structure is not a 1D manifold. Likewise, the letter T, you have problems, of course, at the ends, but also the crossing here will result in the fact that locally this will not look like a, like a line. So a 1D manifold is basically any structure um, that you can draw with, with a pen where you do not cross yourself and where eventually you will end up back at, uh, at the beginning. So this is a 1D manifold. Of course, a 2D manifold is then a geometrical structure that looks locally like a plane and so on and so forth. Um, so for the, the stable manifold, the first property we have is that it's a, it's a 1D uh, manifold. And of course, in our linear example, that's the, the x-axis, which of course um, is, a, is a line everywhere. The second property, which is also easy to verify for the, the linear case, but it also holds for the nonlinear case, is that the stable manifold will be parallel to the eigenvector of uh, the Jacobian for which the eigenvalue is smaller than one in magnitude. And in our case here, in the example 0.9, is the eigenvalue smaller than one, so it's parallel to the, uh, to the x-axis. These two properties, they also hold in general also for nonlinear systems. Good, um, so now we focused on the attracting direction on the y-axis, oh, sorry, on the x-axis in the linear case. There's also the repelling direction, which is the, the y-axis in the linear case. And that repelling direction is responsible for the fact that the, the, the saddle point is actually fundamentally unstable because in practice, uh, due to numerical errors or measurement errors or whatever, it'll be very difficult to hit exactly the stable manifold. And as soon as you're, you're a little bit away from the stable manifold, the repelling direction will take over and your orbit will end up wherever. So and it runs away uh, towards some unknown uh, fate. 
But we can of course now also focus on the unstable direction itself and um, we can define what's called the unstable manifold. Now the unstable manifold for this 2D example we've given there um, is the, um, the y-axis. The question is, can you give a definition, perhaps inspired by that definition over, over there, uh, which results in the y-axis for this particular example? So pause the video and uh, think about this for a while. So you might be tempted to try and write down something like, like this equation over here, but where the limit for n going towards infinity is not zero, but actually infinity. But there's a number of things wrong with that definition. Uh, first of all, that would not only capture all the points on the, the y-axis, but basically every point which is not on the x-axis. So it's much too broad as a definition. And moreover, yeah, that, uh, that limit here, it's not even guaranteed that that exists. Uh, you could end up at some sort of periodic point and then the structure does not have a limit. So you need to be a little bit more creative in trying to come up with a definition for the, the unstable manifold. But then you might say, okay, if I iterate the map forwards and I run away from the saddle points, if I iterate the map backwards, then I actually will end up back at, at the saddle points. If you have your saddle points, um, so let's look again at our um, example for the, the linear case where the x direction was an attracting direction and the y direction is a repelling direction. If you then invert the map, if you uh, go backwards in time, if you want, um, then all the errors will change direction. And then you can see that um, the x-axis is actually the stable manifold for the inverse map. You can define the unstable manifold as such. It's the collection of all the points such that if you apply the inverse map an infinite number of times, um, that then the distance to the uh, saddle points will go towards zero if the amount of times you apply the map goes towards uh, infinity. So the unstable manifold of a map is actually the stable manifold of the inverse map. So this is how you define it without running into the pitfalls of that first, uh, perhaps naive definition that we, uh, that we proposed. Again, for the unstable manifold, you can uh, come up with a number of properties that we're not going to prove and the properties are very similar. It's again a 1D manifold for the 2D case and this time it will be parallel to the eigenvector of the Jacobian which has an eigenvalue which is a magnitude bigger uh, than 1. Okay. Um, so it's a bit boring to look at linear maps here because it's quite straightforward to just look at the, the eigenvectors uh, to come up with uh, the stable and the unstable manifold. But what will happen for nonlinear maps, there it's much more complicated to uh, calculate and, and derive them. Um, but here I have an example of a certain uh, member of the family of Enon maps. And you have the saddle points over here. And I've plotted both the stable and the unstable uh, manifolds. And in terms of shapes, they should look very familiar to some stuff that we've plotted earlier in, in previous videos. So let's look at the unstable manifold here, which is given in red. So this is the, the unstable uh, manifold. Um, and that's actually what we've seen earlier, that this is the Enon attractor. So any attracting structure that you have in your map, and in this case, it's a chaotic attractor, uh, it turns out that it actually lies along the, uh, the unstable uh, manifold. That's, that's very interesting. Um, and let's now look at the, uh, the stable manifold, the stable manifold here in blue. Um, and that turns out to be the boundary of the basin of attraction of uh, our attractor over here. So remember, we've also seen other examples in previous videos where we looked at boundaries of basins of attraction. In that case, we had a period two points, but they looked roughly similar for, for that different uh, type of enol map. Uh, but this is all to illustrate that these uh, saddle points, and more specifically their stable and their unstable manifolds, they play a very important role when we study the dynamics of a, of a certain system. Because, okay, they contain attractors for the unstable case, and in the stable case, the boundary of the attractor. And moreover, there's also a very interesting property, which was discovered by Poincaré when he was playing around with the stability of um, the, the three-body problem, basically. Um, and he figured out that 
of course, yeah, the stable and the unstable manifold, they intersect at the, the saddle point, yeah, for obvious reasons. But he figured out that as soon as these two guys intersect at some other location, that automatically they will intersect at an infinite number of locations. This is then called a heteroclinic uh, orbit, if these two guys intersect uh, multiple times. And that that really is a hallmark of chaos and sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Again, we're not going to prove this. this. This is just giving you a flavor of the importance of saddle points and stable and unstable manifolds for the dynamics of a, uh, of a system.